Tomorrow, we will celebrate Pentecost Sunday, where God's promises were fulfilled by the offering of the Holy Spirit upon His church. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 4 records, When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wine came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seems to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. As we come to worship and praise our God, let it uh, let each one of us experience the presence of Holy Spirit and leads us to worship God in spirit and in truth. I invite you to stand as we begin our worship service. Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And also with you. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. O come, let us sing to the Lord with a shout for joy to the mighty Savior. God is spirit. We must worship him in spirit and in truth. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord now and forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Yes, the Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Together, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all designs known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son, Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, we receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen.
Yes, Lord, breathe on us. Breathe on us, the Holy Spirit. There's one thing, Lord, that we ask. The one thing that we ask and we desire, Lord, is to be in your presence, to dwell in the house of the Lord, to experience your goodness, to experience your warmth, to experience how wonderful our God is. There's nothing worth more than to come close to you, Lord. Come upon us, O Holy Spirit. Come upon us as we worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
together almighty god who at this time taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending to them the light of your holy spirit grant us by the same spirit to hear from judgment in all things and evermore to rejoice in his glory comfort through the merits of christ jesus our savior who is alive and reign with you in the unity of the spirit one god now and forever Amen. Please be seated for the Old Testament Bible reading. Today's Bible reading is taken from the book of Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 1 to 15. Jeremiah, chapter 7, verse 1 to 15. Verse 1. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Stand at the gate of the Lord's house and there proclaim this message. Hear the word of the Lord, all you people of Judah who come through these gates to worship the Lord. This is what the Lord Almighty the God of Israel says, Reform your ways and your actions, and I will let you live in this place. Do not trust in deceptive words and say, This is the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. If you really change your ways and your actions and deal with each other justly, if you do not oppress the alien, the fatherless, or the widow, and do not shed innocent blood in this place, and if you do not follow other gods to your own harm, then I will let you live in this place, in the land I gave your forefathers forever and ever. But look, you are trusting in deceptive words that are worthless. Will you steal and murder, commit adultery and perjury, burn incest to Baal, and follow other gods you have not known, and then come and stand before me in this house which bears my name and say, we are safe. Safe to do all these detestable things? Has this house, which bears my name, become a den of robbers to you? But I have been watching, declares the Lord. Go now to the place in Shiloh, where I first made a dwelling for my name, and see what I did to it because of the wickedness of my people, Israel. While you were doing all these things, declares the Lord, I spoke to you again and again, but you did not listen. I called you, but you did not answer. Therefore, 
What I did to Shiloh, I will now do to the house that bears my name. The temple that you trust in, the place I gave to you and your fathers. I will thrust you from my presence. Just as I did to all your brothers, the people of Ephraim. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invited you to stand for the Gospel Bible reading. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew chapter 5 verse 17 to 20. Glory to you Lord Jesus. Matthew chapter 5 verse 17. Do not think I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them but to fulfill them. For truly I tell you until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen, will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Therefore, anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commands and teaches others accordingly will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. This is the gospel of Christ. And this is a message from the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. All the people, the brother and sister of the Church of Good Samaritan who enter this gate to worship the Lord. And this is what the Lord say: We form your ways and actions and I will, leave, I will let you live in this place and stop cheating, stop lying, stop corrupting, stop having an affair, pay your parking ticket, don't do double parking. Stop being late. Stop from all those sinful acts. And this is what the Lord say. If you want to be the people of God, this is the only way. Father, we pray that your word will speak to us tonight. Let the Holy Spirit give us understanding, help us to really go to a time not just knowing the word, but we will be able to accept even being rebuilt and confronted by the Word of God. Help us to have the heart ready to be transformed so that we can walk away from our sinful nature, our wicked ways, but live according to your will, a way, a life that is pleasing to you. Father, we pray that both here and those who are watching online, that the Holy Spirit Will start working in us, O oh Lord. We commit all this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated, brother and sister. I hope just now I capture your attention. And this is where in chapter 7, where Jeremiah was asked to stand in the gate of the house of God, the temple, to deliver this message, a message which is not famous message this is not popular, a message that we'll consider as what we call a sermon that nearly cost his life. You look at chapter 7, it's basically with the background, if today you have the newspaper on that day, you'll be able to see the headlines of the newspaper, not the statistic, not the SOP, not the MCO, whatever, but the headline will be King Josiah wounded in the battle and a brave monarch brought him to Jerusalem to recover. And the king is dead. Jehoahaz succeeded the father on the throne 
the Egyptian dethroned him, and the monarch reigned only three months. Eliakim is a new king, but he was renamed as Jehoiakim by the Pharaoh. And that is the background of the time where Jeremiah delivered this message. If you look at chapter 7, it seems like somehow a message that inserted uh, in because the whole scenario is very similar and almost for certain. It's happened in chapter 26 about the preaching, the sermon at the courtyard of the temple on the early reign of Jehoiakim, which is about 609 BC. After 18 years, Je Jeremiah was called during the time of, uh, King, of uh, King Joshua. And the sermon, of course, like I say, it almost cost his life. This sermon was inserted to give a change of pace after chapter 5 and chapter 6. We saw a lot of imagery from chapter 2 to chapter 3, and now uh, chapter 3 and chapter 4 as well. Chapter 5 is the chapter where my God searches for the godly people. But what he found is only the ungodly, ungrateful, the unfaithful, the unconcerned. Then chapter 6, God actually sends his judgment to them because he cannot find any, those who are holy. So judgment comes by declaring war, direct the attack, delivers the verdict, and describe the consequences of the people. So after that, there's a change of pace with chapter 7, I believe, inserted in to talk about false worship, to deal with some of the falsehood of the people. From chapter 7 onward until chapter 9, you see a list of falsehood of the people. For being the people of God, there's some criteria, the identity Today, we're not going out just because we wear a cross and we consider ourselves as a Christian. Or we wear a mask with a Good Samaritan, Church of Good Samaritan logo, I'm the Christian. It's not necessary. Some people say recently, what's happened, the conflict in Middle East, is it any of the country represent any of the religion? No, it's just a political agenda. None of them can represent the Christian group, neither the other group. What's a truly Christian today? If the true Christian, I don't think it will come to that conflict. We must first answer that question. A genuine Christian will not come to a place, a genuine whereby a worshipper of God will not come to a time or even to settle things with war. Always we will be the peacemaker because that is the teaching of God. If Jesus himself had taught us even to love our enemy, so today, as we come back to this time, this topic today, uh, being the people of God, what is the mark? What is the identity? How do we represent or present ourselves in the public that I'm the people of God? I'm a Christian. I'm the follower. I'm the disciple of Christ. It's not easy. With all sorts of, even though the knowledge we heard about from preaching and so on, but to practice it, to be one, <laughs> is a different topic. Today, we can judge ourselves. We can ask the Holy Spirit to examine us deep inside us. Yes, today sitting here, of course, I expect all of us will behave like one. A people of God, how about out there? When we are at home, when we are in a workplace, when we are in a public driving or waiting for something, even taking our meal, uh, lining up for queue, are we jamming queue? How we, do we behave in a public? That is something Jeremiah had delivered this message from God to the people. I still believe God is the God of, to, of full of grace and still given them chance. For them, it's almost like waiting for them to repent. So in this chapter, you see, God, you want to be the people of God or His children, the sons or daughter, or today our text will be as a Christian, as a disciple of Christ. There are two ways where uh, Jeremiah delivered to the people then. I hope today we will practice it in our life as well. First one, as he said, uh, reform your ways and action. 
Just now, I had mentioned it. I try to bring it, to contextualize it to our present situation. What is the ways and the actions that need to be reformed in us today? Of course, there, apart from, after verse 3, he said, reform your ways and your actions. I will let you live in this place. Another translation is that I will stay with you in this place. Mean God will allow you to be where? To stay with where? To live in the temple. Because he was there in the temple of God. Jeremiah stayed in the gate. If you do this, if you reform your ways and action, those who come to this gate to worship the Lord, if you reform it, all your ways and action, I will let you live in this place. Not just physical temple only, but truly is God's presence. Meaning to say that if you want to be His people, there are some terms and conditions, something that we need to do. And chapter 7, Jeremiah mentioned, is that to reform our ways and action. What are the ways and actions that the Israelites need to deal with at that time? In verse 5 to verse 7, immediately, uh, Jeremiah pointed out, if you really change your ways and actions and deal with each other justly, if you do not oppress the alien, the fatherless, and the widow, and do not shed innocent blood in this place, if you do not follow other gods to your own harm, then I will let you live in this place, in the land I gave your, I gave your forefathers forever and ever. God wants them to do justice with one another. No oppressions to the weak and the vulnerable. No violence against the innocent. No self-destructive hangering after false God. All this basically is the covenant. It's the commandments. All this while the Israelites have bound to that ten commandments. Of course, they themselves, the Jewish, had expanded and elaborated in a way to become 613 laws altogether. They are all bound with these ten commandments. God wants them to just follow that ten commandments. You'll be okay. But again and again, they have broke it and are either uh, intentionally or unintentionally. But they have brought that covenant. The covenant first image that I had mentioned in chapter 2 about marriage. The covenant that bound between God and them. And uh, God made them the people, but they, God had chosen them the people of God. But they have broke it. Today, if we ask ourselves, can we list down? Can we list down some of the ways or actions that need to be reformed? We might not involve in any of those, like uh, deal with each other justly, oppress the alien, father and the widow, uh, shed innocent blood, or follow other gods. Probably that's the most, the highest possibility that we follow other gods. But deep inside us today, if we want to ask the Holy Spirit to fill us, tomorrow is a Pentecost Sunday, the day to mark the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes, it's going to change us. We cannot just tap and receive the Holy Spirit and not expecting any changes in us. That will be a, change, a lot of changes. Definitely, the Holy Spirit will push all those who are spirit not belong to the Lord out of our body. It will go to a very painful spiritual surgery, for sure. All the dirt from the wickedness and the sinful ways, the Holy Spirit will come and push it away and clean, and clean us. So if I give you some time right now, will you list down and ask the Holy Spirit to help us confess and acknowledge and list down some of the ways that need to be reformed, the ways and the actions. Probably it's quite, quite broad, very broad. Canon, what is the ways? Uh? Can you show us which are the ways that I, I need to uh, take action uh, to ask the Lord to reform me or transform or change me? Let us go back to the standard of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the ways. I am the way. There's no other way. Only through Him that we can go to the Father. Somehow Jesus had mentioned that He's the only way. The standard. And that way, you know, that way is not the broad way, it's the narrow way. 
Jesus even, you know, in the Bible even says we need to make effort. It's not that we use our effort to enter to the heaven or enter the kingdom of God. But the way to the heaven, it involves a lot of effort. We cannot just sit down up to, after the day that we receive Christ and think like we're going to have the smooth sailing and enter the kingdom by the time come. No, it's not. There are a lot of things that we need to go through. There are, no, there are a lot of uh, filter. Um, when the fisherman, Jesus used the illustration, some of the good fish that he caught, the, some of the fish that he caught, he only picked the good one. And the bad one, he threw it back. Many are, are chosen, but few, uh, many are called, few are chosen. Today, if we really want to make sure not just talking about to enter the kingdom of God, but are we living a life that we are still walking in the way of what Jesus wants us to, to walk? That path, walking on that way is not easy. And Jesus also said, you want to follow me, take up the cross and follow me daily. As a Christian, it will guarantee it's going to be a very difficult life. But because of the difficulty, we will experience more about God's grace. Amen. The impossible things that we say, there's no way I can change. It has been with me for so many years. The habit, the ways and the actions that is not pleasing to the Lord, it has been with me for so many years. How am I going to change it? No, it's not us. It's not our own strength. It's not our own might. It's only to the Holy Spirit. It's only to God. If you are willing, reform your ways and action. If the people then are willing to do so, were willing to do so, I truly believe God will save them. God will spare them, which He had done so. But it's just that they don't. Today, He served as a correction we built for all of us. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to verse 2, this is how Paul put it in the more modern way of dealing with the people. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Only if we do not follow the pattern of the world, do not conform ourselves to the pattern of the world, renewing our mind, only then we can know what is the perfect will of God. Today, somehow, people did not see that. People are so lost. People sometimes even come... Uh, uh, Reverend, which is, what is the will of God? Am I living the will of God? I do not really know. I was so confused. Am I, am I living now according to the will of God? Some many people are so, the will of God is so clear, but many of us sometimes are standing in the crossroad. We don't really know how to choose which is God's will, which is the world will. It's only true when we are allowed we are allowing God to work through us, transform us, and put our mind to think about what is only God's. So what, is, what are those things? I just suggest to you, there's a many things in the Bible. One thing that I want to suggest, I mean, one passage that I want to suggest to you is from Philippians chapter 4, verse 8 to verse 9. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, Whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything that is excellent and praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, same in me together, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. God's presence, God will stay with us. God will allow us to live in that place. If we put all these things into practice. 
There's a long list there. You can choose one, just in case we fail to do one of those. The true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, even excellent, praiseworthy. You know, if you go back to Jeremiah chapter 6, you're able to find out something that is very interesting. Well, of course, if you follow the uh, daily living water in chapter 6, at the end of chapter 6, there's one very vivid image that Jeremiah used or God used in verse 30. They are called rejected silver because the Lord has rejected them. It's worthless. Even though they once had the price for it, but the rejected silver means it's worthless. Even though they're still called as silver, but the rejected one. These are the people of God who were once called the chosen, the sons and the daughter, the one that God saved them, bring, brought them out from Egypt. Miracles upon miracles, love upon love, grace upon grace. So many times, God again and again, even come to a point that God relent from His action just to save these people, protect them, love them. But this is a time in chapter 6, you see, they have become the rejected silver. Do not wait until we become the rejected Christian. When we become worthless, we really want to live a life that always to keep ourselves in that track, in that way. What ways? God ways. Reform your ways and your action. I hope as we do our reflection on this sermon, or even later when we come to ministry time, all of us will really put this season a spiritual checkup, spiritual surgery. We really humble ourselves to come to the Lord and ask the Lord to reform us. Lord, this is my way, ways that is not pleasing to you. Ways that have really sinned against you. Ways that put me away from you. And ask the Lord to help us to list down all those and start confessing to the Lord. Amen. And second, God say, refuse to trust the deceptive words. Verse 4, do not trust in the deceptive words and say, this is the temple of the Lord, this is the temple of the Lord, this is the temple of the Lord. They thought and have deceived themselves with this chanting at that time. The temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple. they thought this temple is what we call the ultimate security. As long as you are in there, you are safe. This is from the, not just a false worship, from the false prophet, false teaching. It's like saying that, hey, today uh, you go to the church and you're safe. Which is true, but half true. At that time, the, some of the teachers or the prophets, other false prophets say, hey, this is the temple. Some even are like, between the people, hey, this is the temple. Meaning to say they can go all the way to do all kinds of wicked things. But, well, so to say lah. Eh, the weekend, as long as you come to the temple, and for them it's three times in the year. Lah. Normally they still go to the temple, but the big celebration is only three times in the year. Today, is it self as a same method that we deal with our life today? Like I say, you know, Anglican quite good in this area. At least once a week we will come and do our confession and receive the absolution. Huh? I mean, we priests. Like me, I'm blessed because three times. Just in case I've got a lot, but I have it three times. Saturday once, twice on Sunday. Quite good, huh? I confess myself and do the absolution to myself. Is it going to save me? If it's not a genuine one, it will be a deceptive word. Word that had been spoken to us and make us to trust Hey, okay, I do this, uh, it's still fine. It's still okay. There are certain things in our life, it is not okay. 
Because in verse 8 to verse 11, Jeremiah pointed out to them, But look, you are trusting in the deceptive words that are worthless. Will you steal, murder, commit adultery, perjury, burn incense to Baal, and follow other gods you have not known? And then, come and stand before me in this house, which bear my name, and say, Ah, we are saved. Saved to do all these detestable things. Had this house, which bear my name, become a den of robbers or to you? But I have been watching, declares the Lord. There are few incidents, you remember, even the kings will have their trouble, they can go into the temple, as long as you hold the ark, the, one of the corners of the ark of the Lord, then nobody can touch you, actually. <laughs> when you go to the house, mean I can continue to steal and murder, commit adultery, perjury, burn incense to bell, follow other gods. All this, especially, it's the Ten Commandments, you remember? The first one, follow other gods, have other gods apart from gods, and also the commandment number six, seven, and eight, and nine. Steal, murder, command, commit adultery, and perjury. <laughs> they thought, I can continue to do so. But weekend, as I come, as long as I can go to the temple, I'm safe. All these are deceptive words. They do not see their destructions is coming. That's why they was being exiled. Their country was destroyed. Today, are we facing the same situation? It's just like a son will continue to do all kinds of bad things, things that are not pleasing to the father, and still thinking like, as long as I go back to the house, like one o'clock in the morning, I'm still considered my father's son. Today is the same thing. Do not think that we can do all kinds of things out there. Thinking God has His grace. Huh. That's why there are a lot of sermons that like crazy grace. Huh? It is all okay one. Huh? It is all okay one. Which is true. God will forgive. But up to which point? Just like the illustration that we always use in the nurture class about grace of God, about forgiveness. It's just like a handy plus in the first aid kit box. No? You, you cannot say, oh, if I can't, I have a card, it's okay, there's a handy plus there. But we can keep on letting ourselves and even to cut ourselves, thinking like there's a lot of handy plus in the first aid box. But one day you open, they might have finished all the you might have finished all the handy plus that was available before. God's grace will not come to the limit, will not come to the end, for sure. But we cannot take it for granted, thinking like what the people been taught. All these deceptive words, hey, it's okay one, as long as you go to there, there's a temple there, you go to the there, and you are safe. They don't see that destruction which they should have learned it hundred years ago more than 100 years ago, what was happened in the northern kingdom. Same thing. At the end, the northern kingdom was destroyed, completely destroyed by the Assyrian. That's why in, uh, later on we'll see that when God pointed out sea law to them. But there's still time for us to really to reform our ways and stop trusting those deceptive words. Look at Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive up demons and perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you away from me, you evildoers. It's very important for us to know God and God know us. And to keep that relationship, do not break that covenant. As the book of Revelation say, the end time, Jesus will come 
like the bridegroom, the church is a bride. There's a process of washing through the Word of God, through the water, that He will wash and prepare this bride to welcome the bridegroom as He come again. As the church, as the people of God, are we ready? Do not think that we have done so many things like prophesy in His name. Lord, they are not do, and I'm not drive up demons and perform many miracles. I hope we will not hear the response from the Lord as He say, I never knew you. I never knew you. So make sure we protect this covenant. We will continue to maintain, not just maintain, to grow in this relationship and get closer, deeper, to experience more from the Lord. It will not be just on Sunday to call Father, 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 but it will truly come to a point that true relationship between the Father and the Son. Once we break that relationship, it will be like Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 12 to verse 15. God pointed out to them about what's happened in Silo. Silo is a few miles away, I think in the northern part, which was captured and destroyed and now under the Assyrian. Silo is a place where, you know, Samuel also came from there. A lot of things happened to them uh, at that place. Okay? But here, he said, go now to the place of, uh, in Silo where I first make a drawing of my name. You know? It's quite so-called holy and quite important and see what I did to it because the wickedness of the people Israel. While you were doing all these things, declares the Lord, I spoke to you again and again. But you did not listen. I called you, but you did not answer. Therefore, what I did to see, Lord, I will now do to the house that bears my name, the temple you trust in, the place I gave to you and your fathers. I will trust you from your, my presence just as I did all your brothers, the people of Ephraim. This is another verdict that the Lord delivered to the people. Said the people then did not repent. It's just like what happened to the time of Noah. You remember? Noah spent I think at least 100 years, or some people calculated it, about 120 years to build the ark. For that 120 years, can you imagine, somebody had built such a big ark, and people walked by. I believe Noah has sent out that message, hey, repent, repent, the flood is coming. People laugh at him, mock at him. Silly guy, built a... <laughs> You are out on the mountain. You should build a boat on the seashore. Chance was given more than 100 years. People don't repent when the floods come. And the Bible described they are all drinking, eating, and marrying. When the flood come, it was too late. Today, we know, yes, as we receive Christ, we have the salvation, the assurance of eternal life, which is, this is a guarantee and a promise from God. But it doesn't mean that we can just take it lightly and fall into the same example, the ways, that the actions, even the trust in the deceptive words from the people which happened more than 3,000 years ago. Now is our time. We have the Word of God, and this is the season God wants us to deal with it. I believe God wants to change, and today we focus on the ways and the actions. How do we respond to the Lord? Jeremiah stood at the gate and asked them, Hear the Word Lord, hear the Word of the Lord, who enter this gate to worship the Lord. Another word is that before you enter this gate to worship the Lord, make sure that 
we are rightly called the people of God. And I believe this is a place where all of us, including me, we should put ourselves again to let this spiritual doctor and examine us again. Amen. It's going to be tough, but it is needed. I hope also some of us will rise up like Jeremiah and preach what we call a popular sermon. I can imagine for the, this is only the fourth week. Uh, I'm not quite sure how are you handling the book of Jeremiah. Just chapter 7, no? A few more chapters. We're going to end at the end of November only. <laughs> can you handle it? It's going to be tough. Some people will just choose to walk away because they would prefer to hear some, very, what do you call, uh, motivated, a nice sermon, uh, make us happy uh, sermon. Uh, only talk about faith, uh, which is good. But this is a season I want to encourage you to re put ourselves to listen to the book of Jeremiah. It's going to be tough. Only when we experience the same kind of situation. If you are not, then I'm not saying that you are okay, but you will be called to help others. But we are in the same situation like the people then. It's time for us to learn and ask the Lord to help us. Tomorrow, like I say, is a day of Pentecost. It will be good to coincide where we ask the Holy Spirit to pour down to us, to fill us again. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit will help a person to transform a person. If a person truly uh, filled with the Holy Spirit daily, I think what has explained the one that, you know, what is true, what is noble and so on, it is not a difficult task for us to learn. Amen. Because it's not us. It's the Lord who are constantly transforming and changing us. Let's pray. Again, I take this opportunity to invite you to come to the Lord. It's unfortunately we do not have the laying of hands to minister to you by touching you and pray for you in that way. But I truly believe the Holy Spirit can work in a miraculous way. With or without music, laying hands or not. But I want you to know that the Holy Spirit is here. Let the Holy Spirit move to us from the front to the back, from the right to the left. Touch us is a very personal way. The Holy Spirit has no problem for doing so, but it will depend on us. How wide is your heart open to the Lord? How ready that you allow the Lord work in us. And this week, I want you to start listing down some of the ways and actions that is truly not God's way and not God's wanted kind of action. Probably nobody knows but you know, those ways and actions is not from the Lord. It's not what God wants us to have as a people of God. In your mind right now, list it down. List it down. It could be a long list. It could be just one or two. But if there is some, list it down right now. List it down right now. List it down right now. It's just like imagine yourself having a piece of paper and a pen, start listing down one by one. Don't rush. As the Holy Spirit prompts you, list it down. Ways and action that you need to be reformed, need to be changed. List it down.
Oh, come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit. Pour down your spirit right now, Lord. Pour down your spirit right now, Lord. Examine us, examine us. Work deep inside us, oh Lord. Shike, hendadaba shike. Come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit. As you finish that list, I want to ask you at this moment, confess to the Lord. Acknowledge that that is, that are the ways and actions that Lord want to reform. The Lord want to change, transform you. Acknowledge that one by one. One by one. Come. Hallelujah. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. The Holy Spirit will pour down to each one of us here like the fire that burn, that burn. Burn away all these ways and actions that is not from the Lord, not even pleasing from the Lord. Lord, I pray the Holy Spirit will move like fire at this moment. Refine us, O oh Lord. Refine us, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, refine us, O oh Lord. One by one. One by one. Come, Holy Spirit. Burn, burn, refine. Burn in us, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Start praying, brother and sister. Start praying to the Lord. Start praying to the Lord. You can raise up your voice or you can pray from your heart. Start praying to the Lord. And ask the Lord. And ask the Lord. And I'll even you start talking to the Lord. It's just like sons talking to the Father as you ask for forgiveness and ask the Lord to show His grace and mercy on you again. Let's come to Him and pray and even to commit ourselves. This is our commitment that you will put down a resolution that you will commit to the Lord. Say, Lord, no more. No more. I want a new life. If this is your resolution, if this is your commitment to the Lord, start praying around. Pray to the Lord. Pray to the Lord. Let's all pray, brothers and sisters. Father, as say, come to you, O Lord, help me, help me, O Lord. Help me, O Lord, to really walk away from those ways and actions. And I'm about to live a ways, uh, deep in a way that I truly follow what is Christ. As you say, if I follow you, I will take up that cross and follow you, O Lord. Show me, show me the way of what is noble, what is true, what is love, what is right, what is pure, what is lovely, what is admirable, what is excellent, what is praiseworthy. Help me. Lord, I, help me to really think about those. Renew my mind, O Lord. Renew our mind, O Lord. Oh, Father, I truly do not want to be a rejected silver. Worthless. But Lord, I pray that had your mercy and grace upon us, O oh Lord. that we will continue to live as a people of God. 
Lord, we commit ourselves into your hand. Continue to ask the Holy Spirit to refine us, O oh Lord. Help us to really walk through bit by bit in the book of Jeremiah, what the Lord had dealt with the people then. Today, Lord, we are open, we are humble ourselves, and we are ready. And let God do the spiritual surgery in us, O oh Lord. Strengthen us, strengthen our faith so that we can walk through this season with full of confidence, full of hope and knowing that what will happen after this truly God will refine us and make us new again as we continue to testify and glorify your name. Lord, we commit ourselves into your hand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand. Let us reaffirm our faith by saying nice and great together. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, one in being with the Father, through, through Him all, all things, things were made. made. For, for us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. The third day, He rose again in fulfillment of the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated, brothers and sisters. So happy to see you again on uh, this very uh, crucial <laughs> weekend. Uh, just watch the news. There seems like everything is just implied, uh, try to impose to the West Malaysia and also Labuan. We haven't heard what's uh, going to have uh, for Sabah yet or Sarawak. Eh? So do, do watch out uh, the information that we're going to send out through whatever network that we have, the English Worship uh, Service Group, or the DD group and uh, some of the others, even through the PCC, we definitely will inform you. But for the time being, that is what we are going to uh, have, which we still have this privilege to come here for the physical, uh, the on site worship services. Okay? So please continue to do so and also pray and, and encourage others uh, so that we can watch out from each other because. Like kita jaga kita, our life also we are also responsible to others. So I want to strongly encourage you at this moment, uh, which we probably hear a lot of things that outside there, it's very important for us to be alert and also to watch ourselves. Uh, so um, like just follow the SOP, three main simple things to wear masks, what, sanitize your hands and also keep the social distancing. Then I'm not saying it's going to be okay. But uh, that is the basic three things that we need to observe. Eh? Those are unnecessary events and so on, especially dying in or having a big party and so on. If it's unnecessary, then I will really strongly encourage you not to do so. Okay? Uh, so uh, together, I think uh, very soon we can curve the uh, uh, COVID-19 cases. Amen? All right? Now, let me highlight to you some of the announcements from the bulletin. Now, uh, because of this so-called for, uh, for the time being, the SOP is like that, mean we will still continue to have our on-site uh, worship service. So next week, there are one special celebration. It's the Amatan uh, and Gawai celebration service. Uh, it's still open for registration. It's not full yet. I'm not quite sure what's the update of the numbers. Uh, we only allow 255, which 175 is over here, 80 in the hall for that particular Sunday. 
Um, it's not like we had registered for the normal Sunday worship service. Uh, but then this one, we still need you to register because we also need to prepare the packaged food for them. All right? So now I think it's also open uh, for other congregations as well. Okay? But of course, at the end, the priority was still keep to the BM congregation. The BM congregation also opened the invitation for other brothers and sisters from other congregations to come together to celebrate this Kaamatan Kawai celebration service. Amen? Okay? So pray for them uh, so that this celebration will be very meaningful uh, without like those, like what we call previously, uh, all this alamaydi, la, no, all the dancing la, and so on, la, no. Eh? But uh, it will be going to be uh, focusing on God and uh, to count the blessing of God. Amen? All right. Now, the other uh, announcement is that now, because the situation has get better, we started to open up for uh, the flower offerings. Uh, so if you want to do so, please like us with either the office or even some of our staff at the back or even through the caritas that you want to offer Anna to contribute for the flower on every Sunday or every week, every weekend, at the Saturday on Sunday. So you can do so. Uh, all right. The other announcement, please take note from the bulletin. But uh, there will be one extra uh, event which probably is not directly involved the English congregation, but uh, the Chinese congregation will have their online prayer meeting on this coming Thursday, which is on the 27th of May, 8 o'clock. If you want to join them, this is going to be a Zoom meeting. Please talk to our staff as well. We'll send out the link to you, or we probably will post the link to the DD group and uh, the ministry group as well. If you want to join uh, for the Chinese online prayer meeting, then you can join them and uh, pray uh, together. Amen? All right? Other than that, the, all our normal prayer meeting now, like I say, we always put uh, like half an hour before our worship services. Okay, instead of having once a month until where we're going to change that. But now, for the time being, that we will encourage all of us to come half an hour before to join in the prayer meeting, uh, the pre-service prayer meeting. Uh, that will be our every week prayer meeting that we have. Uh, unless there will be a special arrangement for either the DD group or the special one like the Chinese online prayer meeting, or other than that, that will be the presence and relevance of it. Continue to pray. Prepare your group members as we, uh, the church open up again for all the activities like having on site both the children, the youth and the senior citizen or even some of the adult group. If you want to have it in the church uh, compound, please prepare your member that uh, after the 7th of June, we will open all those immediately because we really need to grab on that window uh, if everything still goes on like this. Uh. Amen. Okay, so continue to pray that uh, it's very important for us to stay together and face all these things courageously. Amen. Let's all pray. Let us unite our hearts to pray for our church, diocese, nation, and state. Father, we praise and thank you for sending your Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost upon your church to make them bold to preach the gospel so that the church grows for the church we pray that the church will continue to experience and depend upon the holy spirit to empower us to witness jesus to others we pray for the new pcc members that you grant them wisdom as they work together with canon chin for the spiritual and physical changes in our church for the diocese we pray for all all the clergy and pastors as they celebrate Pentecost Sunday on 23rd of May. We pray that you grant renewal and revival to come upon all the churches in our diocese and other denominations as well. For the nation, we pray for your protections upon our frontliners from fatigue, discouragement and infection due to the increase of patients in all the hospitals, especially in West Malaysia. May you give them both mental and physical strength 
to continue their responsibility that are entrusted to them. For the state, we pray for our security in Sabah, especially for the police, army, and security force, particularly in the East Coast, to be vigilant against any undesirable elements by your help. Father, thank you for listening to our prayers. We commit all this into your hand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. The second is this, Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than this. Lord, have mercy upon us and write these laws in our hearts. We beseech you. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us therefore confess our sins and penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all men. Together, merciful God, our Heavenly Father, our Maker and our Judge, we have sinned against you and against our fellow men, and thought, word, and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we repent and truly sorry for our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, Father, forgive us, strengthen us to love and obey your innocence of life, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you and deliver you from all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you for his service by the power of the Holy Spirit and keep you in eternal life. Amen. Let us stand for the peace. Now that we have been put right with God through faith in Jesus Christ, we have peace with God. So we must make peace with one another in the body of Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, also with you. Let us greet each other with the peace. peace of Brothers and sisters, lift up your hearts. We lift the hearts to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is not only right, it is our duty and our joy always and everywhere to give you thanks and praise. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And now we give you thanks because by the same spirit we are led into all truth and are given power to proclaim your gospel to the nations to serve you as a royal priesthood. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy God, the might and might. Let us kneel or sit. O 
All glory to you, our Heavenly Father, for in your tender mercy you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a full atonement for the sins of the whole world, offering one for all his one sacrifice of himself. He instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. Hear us, merciful Father, we humbly pray and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we who receive these gifts of bread and wine, according to your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance of his death and suffering, may be partaker of his most blessed body and blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave thanks, and he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim, Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ has come again. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Blessed are those who are invited to the feast of the Lamb. Let us rejoice and give glory to God. To give our God for the people of God, draw near with faith and humbly receive this bread and wine in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Body and blood of Lord Jesus Christ, give you in eternal life. The body and blood of Lord Jesus Christ, give you in eternal life. The body and blood of Lord Jesus Christ, give you in eternal life. The body and blood of Lord Jesus Christ, give you in eternal life. Body and blood of Lord Jesus Christ, give you in eternal life. The body and blood of Lord Jesus Christ, give you. Body and blood of Lord Jesus Christ, give you in eternal life. Mm.
Let us pray as our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us of our sin, as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The thanksgiving prayer. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have accepted us as living member of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. We thank you that you have fed us with a sweet food, a sacrament of body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you in gladness and singleness of heart. Amen. Let us stand for the blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen. Now ended, you may leave after a silent meditation.